turn your wounds into wisdom. You will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. It's just an experience. Just an experience. I remember being taken off the air in Baltimore, being told that I was no longer be, being fit for television and that I could not anchor the news because I used to go out on the stories. And my own truth was, even though I'm not a weeper, I would cry for the people in the stories, and uh, which really wasn't very effective as a news reporter to be covering a fire <laughs> and uh, crying because the people lost their house. Um, and it wasn't until they, I was demoted as a on-air anchor woman and thrown into the talk show arena to get rid of me that I allowed my own truth to come through. And the first day I was on the air, doing my first talk show back in 1978, it felt like breathing, which is what your true passion should feel like. It should be so natural to you. And so I took what had been a mistake, what had been perceived as a failure with my career as an anchor woman in the news business and turned it into a talk show career that's done okay for me. First started as a broadcaster, I was 19, very insecure, thrown into television, yet pretending to be Barbara Walters, looking nothing like her, and still going to college. So I do all my classes in the morning from eight to one, and then the afternoon I work from two to 10 and did the six o'clock news and would stay up and study and all that stuff, at, you know, until one, two or three o'clock in the morning and then just start the routine all over again. And my classmates were so jealous of me that I remember like taking my little $115 paycheck and um, at the time I thought it was really a lot, but taking $115 and trying to appease them. I would like always, anytime anybody needed money, I was always offering, oh, you need $10 or taking them out for pizza, ordering pizza for the class and things like that. Trying to, that whole disease to please, that's where it was the worst for me, I think, because I wanted to be accepted by them and could not be. Because first of all, I didn't have the time. They wanted, wanted me to pledge and I didn't have the time to pledge. I, was, I didn't have the time to be a part of all the other college activities or a part of that whole lifestyle. And it was very difficult for me socially. Really one of the worst times of my life because I was trying to fit in in school and be a part of that culture, but also trying to build a career in television. It's very difficult for me to even see myself as successful because I still see myself as in the process of becoming successful. To me, successful is getting to the point where you are absolutely comfortable with yourself. And it does not matter how many things you have acquired. Uh, the ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it to me is about the greatest success I have achieved. Uh, the fact that I have, you know, in the public side done whatever is fine. It's all a part of a process for, for growing for me. But to me to have the, in, the kind of internal strength and internal courage it takes to say, no, I will not let you treat me this way is what success is all about. It's the same thing that prevents you from being abused as a child, that prevents you from being abused as an adult that allows you to build success for yourself. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. You are worthy to say no. You are that it's okay if you say no. It's okay if you say no and then people don't like you. That's really okay. The important thing is how you feel about what you're doing, how you feel about yourself. It's a long struggle though. It's a long struggle. And I'm just hoping that, you know, in the work that I do on the show and the speaking that I do around the country, and that young people who are watching this can get the lesson sooner than I did. Because it's painful, because you keep repeating it over and over and over until you get it right. And what I found is that every time you have to repeat the lesson, it gets worse. Because it's, you know, it's, I, I call it God trying to get your attention, the universe trying to get your attention. So we didn't get your attention the first time, so we're gonna have to hit you a little harder this time. So I'm still doing it, I'm still learning. Think of all the times you let a man treat you badly or someone, your friends, walk all over you? How many times have you let hurtful words or criticism crush you? Well, I was uh, one of those people who was raised not to have a lot of self-esteem. Uh, and I know anybody else who was physically violated as a child, as I was, uh, got whippings every day. 
the lesson of a whipping, the lesson of being heavily disciplined with violence is that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough. And so it takes a long time to get a sense of self-worth and self-value. And so I was in my 20s doing what everybody in their 20s does and looking for love in all the wrong places and looking to be validated by somebody else's view of who I was and wanting them to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yes, you're okay, you're, you're okay. And I've done some really embarrassing, ridiculous, crazy ass things over the years, holding onto the bumper of a Datsun Z like I could actually keep him from pulling off. And I remember one time he had left and slammed the door on my hand. And I had, just like a lot of women, had the barrier of, well, you, you can say anything to me, but you cannot hit me. You cannot hit me. He didn't hit me, but the door slammed on my hand. And I thought, well, that's coming close. That's coming very close. And I remember the door slamming on my hand, falling to the floor, and in front of me was a mirror. And I saw myself on the floor with my hand now bruised and thinking, I have become the woman that I watched my cousin Alice be my whole life as a kid. The only difference is that I'm battered in spirit and the next step is going to be, who knows? So lying there on the floor is the moment I made that decision that I have now become a woman that I never imagined myself to be, and I got to figure out how to get myself out of this. And that was the beginning of the lesson, which is I'm hoping happens to you tonight from the stories that you're going to see, because it doesn't happen all at once. Even though you want it to change, sometimes it takes a little longer to actually get the message that people who love you don't treat you badly. Love doesn't hurt. It's supposed to feel good. This whole idea of quantum physics physics, Newton's law, nature, the way, the order of things, and how life and nature itself operates. And I could see a reflection of my own self, my own being in all of that. And reading Newton's law, third law of motion, which says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, was like a religious experience for me. I just understand, I mean, all my bells and whistles and lights and dancing emojis went off because I could see that. I'd experienced a little bit of that in The Color Purple, that beautiful line where Whoopi, as Miss Seeley says, everything you try to do to me is already done to you. That struck me in particular in the movie. And I understood that everybody's actually saying the same thing. Newton's saying the same thing as Miss Seeley is saying the same thing as what we in this country and many other countries call the golden rule, that really what you put out is coming back all the time. And what really struck me is that it's not do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It really is when you do, it's already done because that's law. The best way to begin to figure out who you are really meant to be is to ask the universe God, that question. God, how can I be used in service to myself first? And how can I then use that service to serve the world? Use your life to serve the world and you will find that it also serves you. One of the biggest mistakes people make is thinking that they have to get paid a lot of money or even get paid at all for their calling. You are here to honor your calling, whether you're paid for it or not. If you can get paid for it, that makes life exponentially better. But if you are not paid for it, that is also really just fine because honoring the calling feeds everything else you do in your life. I have always known this about celebrity. The real power of being somebody that somebody knows, and I really think that the only difference between being famous and not is that more people know your name. So the only difference between understanding that is understanding that what Selma has done, what Susan has done, what Anna has done, Rebecca has done, what Jim has done, what I've done, you too can do. Because true philanthropy comes from living from the heart of yourself. 
and giving what you have been given. How will you do that? How will you use your personality, the energy of your personality, to serve that which is your soul's calling? I know this for sure. Any life, no matter how fantastic it is, how glorious it seems, how much attention you receive, how much square footage you have, any life and every life is enhanced by the sharing and the giving and the opening up of the heart space. Your life gets better when you can find a way to share it with someone else. So what we've done, you can do. The real empowerment comes when every person leaves this room and makes a decision, makes a decision. Maybe that decision is that you will write a check and support some of the wonderful organizations you've heard here today. But the true decision is, how will you use yourself? How will you use everything that you have been given to serve that which is greater than yourself? How will you use that to become truly, authentically empowered? Now, it is a beautiful thing to receive an award and to be on the cover of Variety. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful thing. But the true reward is in the lives that you are able to touch and the people who you know you have impacted.